Ever since I was younger, I had a fascination with mysteries. The obscure, the unsolved, and the unknowable. From interesting to disturbing, harmless to dangerous, join me as I uncover rabbit holes and track down information on a plethora of topics you may know little about. This is Atlas Investigates. Hello everyone, I'm Atlas, and this is part 4 of the Chris Chan Iceberg. Welcome back. Once again, just to get the explanation out of the way, an iceberg chart is a collection of information on a specific topic ranked based on how obscure and or disturbing the facts are. And Chris Chan is a person on the internet that many people are familiar with, or have at least heard of. He holds the title of the most documented person on the internet because of the sheer amount of facts that are available regarding his exceedingly strange life. This iceberg was created by the user Piccadilly on icebergcharts.com and was posted on the 8th of February, 2022. This is part four of this chronologically organized iceberg, and I encourage you to go to my channel and watch the first three parts if you haven't already. If you have already done that, then let's begin. The Early Trolling Era, 2007 to 2010. But before we get into things, I want to specify that there are a lot of overlapping sagas that occurred during this time period. In this episode, we're going to be covering parts of the ED saga, parts of the Gameplay saga, parts of the Panda Halo saga, and the entirety of the Blanca saga. In order to keep things chronological, I'm going to go over the events as they happen in the timeline, as opposed to going saga by saga. So. Keep an eye out for the title that'll appear on screen and let you know which saga the event I'm talking about is connected to. Let's begin. The Game Place Photo I already mentioned this in the previous episode, but we'll recap it briefly before moving on. This refers to photos taken of Chris without his knowledge at the Game Place on October 26th of 2007 by Daniel Mims and his friend Lucas. These images were posted on the website 4chan, where discussion of him and his antics began. A thread on Chris was also posted on the Something Awful form, and these two sites were ground zero for the myth of Chris Chan to spread across the internet. ED Edits On November 10th, 2007, Chris would start making edits to his own Encyclopedia Dramatica page under a variety of accounts with fake names. The catalyst for this would be someone uploading the famous Goatsy shock image to the website, which greatly offended Chris. I obviously can't show the image here, but you can look it up for yourself if you don't know what I'm talking about. However, understand that you do so at your own risk, as the image shows some guy bending over for the camera and stretching his butthole extremely wide. In editing the ED page, Chris would replace information about himself that he found to be defamatory and would replace it with his own personal information. Much of what we know about his upbringing and personal beliefs comes from his edits to the ED page. The 11th of November is when he uploaded the shecameforquick.jpg image to the website, along with other Rule 34 art he'd drawn of his own Sonichu characters. Officer Nasty. <laughs> in one of Chris's edits to the ED page, he reveals that he has an inflatable sex doll that he uses regularly, who he calls Officer Nasty. You really can't make this shit up. Right after Christmas, Christian would buy another sex doll. He would name Kimmy. This was a doll with an anime girl decal on it, and it would be used in various videos over the years as we'll come to see later. Lori Lopez in January of 2008, Chris was still being strung along by Joshua Martinez, who was pretending to be a girl named Lori Lopez. After being under the assumption that he would be going on a date with Lori, he was told by her that she was instead deciding to go out with Joshua. Angered by this, Chris went on to post about it on ED in an attempt to deflect the trolls from himself onto Joshua, writing this on the website. Look, pal. If you really want to take down someone who has a reputation, 
consider one Joshua Martinez. Ladies come a running from at least as far as New York City to his house in Dyke, VA. Not just any ladies, but stars like Megan Fox, Jessica Alba, Jessica Beale, Jessica Simpson, and plenty other whores. He also has been piggybacking on the stardom of Vanessa Hudgens, singing with her in her Latino albums, and starring with her in various HBO movies, and even worse, Transformers 2. He has her and some other gal named Brittany for both his simultaneous girlfriends, dual marriage in the works here. He's a more lucky SOB than I can ever surmount to. Ruin his reputation, Joshua Martinez. P.S. You did not hear this whole thing from me. If you're wondering why he mentions a bunch of famous women here, it's because Joshua had been telling him that he personally knew movie stars and hung out with them regularly. This was another lie, of course. You know what? I hate me too. This is a collection of images that Chris uploaded to the ED page in March of 2008. It is a number of drawings that show Chris getting beaten up during fights in his comics. These were either uploaded in order to deflect criticism that Chris was too powerful and had no flaws, or was an expression of his angst at the time due to the drama that had unfolded between him and Megan. Expelled from church. In mid-March, Chris was kicked out of the church he had been attending, Grace Baptist Church. This was due to the pastor finding out about what Chris had been getting up to online. Specifically, in Chris's own words, the pastor, quote, did not like my views I've expressed in my video I did on my 25th birthday, and he found the ED page, end quote. Though he later claimed that the pastor just did a background check on him and found images of girls in bikinis on Chris's Facebook page. After getting kicked out, Chris would start attending Wesley Memorial United Methodist Church, the Game Place Ban. Chris was banned from the Game Place by the store's manager, Michael Snyder, in June of 2008. Earlier in April, Chris had been banned for two weeks due to his juvenile behavior and frequent outbursts, but had been allowed back. This new ban was a permanent one. The straw that broke the camel's back was Christian getting into a shouting match with a black kid, though Chris later claimed it was actually because he was trying to hook his Wii up to the game place's TV, and Michael Snyder wouldn't let him. Chris got angry and wrote, Michael Snyder loves the F out of Mary Lee Walsh, on the side of a card box. Regardless of the reason for his ban, Chris called his parents over to argue against it. Michael Snyder was not having any of this, and he called the police. An argument ensued, but the Chandlers were ultimately forced to leave the premises. Quick's second message. This is a video Chris posted on August 3rd, 2008. In it, he rages against people trolling him online, and specifically, those responsible for his Encyclopedia Dramatica page. He blames them for his falling out with Megan, completely missing the point that he was the one who uploaded the She Came For Quick image, and confirmed to the world that she was the woman in the drawing. He threatens to not release Sonichu Issue 7 until the ED page is taken down, and asserts his heterosexuality as he was offended by people calling him gay. This video also contains some of my favorite sound bites of Chris. Citizens of the internet, I present an open message to each and every one of you. Y'all should know me by now, but if you don't, I am Christian Weston Chandler, the original creator of Sainchu, the Electric Hedgehog Pokemon, back on March 17th, 2000. Any dates earlier are void. I present this open message because I have a whole bunch of people on the internet give me hate. Show me a lot of hate. And I do not appreciate it. it takes me off. You think you could just hate me just to get a laugh out of yourself? Think about it. You're laughing at somebody else's pain and torture because I am lonesome, still trying to find a boyfriend free girl and to make it to a sweetheart. Y'all think I'm just a sap, a chump, 
dumbass, whatever you may think. But you know what? You. You. Every last one of you who has expressed hate against me, you're the shitheads. Also, every last one of you who thinks that I am similar to that of that senile old man and family guy, you're the pedophiles. Every one of you who thinks I'm homo and calls me that because I am not, I'm straight. I'm straight. You're the homos. Every last one of you. I could, I could take the whole time to express so much anger and frustration. I'm only on your side. I do wear glasses. Take it or leave it, losers. It helps me see better. See more detail and more clear vision than any of you knuckleheads can put together of your own ego that you so richly consume of. But, on a more serious note, learning recently of the false or real literature with downloaded copies of my comic pages and whatnot. It has been either distributed or created without my consent or approval. So, it is a fake. And if it ever is published, or if it ever shows profit, let it weigh on your consciousness throughout your eternal life. That you are torturing and worse off, tearing the heart and soul and emotions of the innocent man, the, out the innocent still 26-year-old virgin. Not only that, but I have so many lonely nights and stress that you cannot just imagine it. Now, as for the other serious notes of any new stuff officially made by me under my own hands, not by anybody else's, which are considered false. I just have not been feeling the inspiration to draw, to color, because the loneliness, I cannot stand that. The hatred I'm getting from every last one of you who has contributed to that Encyclopedia Dramatica webpage. And every other forum, internet document, lewdly drawn pictures with dicks. I love dykes. Dykes. China. I'm straight. If I ever, if I see a dick, I just look away with a moment of being freaked out. And emailing me pictures is not going to get any of you any further conclusion to will Crystal get out of the mirror? Will the seven signs you balls be collected? Will I ever find my sweetheart? And am I, am I or Megan Shore still an island? Which, by the way, she broke up with me so much long time, so much long ago because the contributors to that ED page, you broke the emotional strength between us. You promoted such twists and turns to everything I have said and drawn and written and whatnot. You broke up the best friendship, the best relationship, the closest I could ever have in this pitiful adult life. You did it! Every last one of you! If I could blame myself I would definitely blame myself for drawing those five pictures. Those five drawings. And by the way, that is not Crystal whose eyes are censored. That is Megan. And just for, and just for, for taking it up and c twisting it around as such. Think about it. Think about it. Lay on your conscience. Because... Nothing, no more official science you art or work may or may not ever emerge depending 
on the amount of hate that has decreased. That web page taken off the internet. I wish I had never found that piece of shit in the first place back on that Halloween of 07, somewhere around there. And promoting the hatred. And drawing such loose, such lucrid mockeries is not going to further the story plot or have anything new created or even going to help in any way. As I am telling you this, right into my PlayStation Eye. <sighs> if I ever do find the one that is to be my sweetheart, I will give her such care, such tenderness, such love. We get around a hanky-panky, that's fine. That's good. We get married. I will have my God create my God called daughter. She will be taken care of lovingly. Those of you who mock me otherwise with such frivolous, lucrative adultery. If I ever hear another, any more new stuff, it will weigh on your conscience with me tearing at your souls. Emotionally. Let that weigh on your conscience. For those of you who have already done so or are thinking about doing it, I am not a pedo fork, you dorks! I tell you, so much anger, so much stress, it's hard to see straight. Let that the result of all that you have contributed against me weigh heavily like a 10,000 pound anvil. 16 tons, what do you get? Another day older and deeper in debt. If I was not a baptized man over at the Methodist Church by the University of Virginia, I tell every last one of you who have contributed to the hatred and downpour, go to hell. But I do, but I would not even weigh that upon my worst enemy, because that, because I am more kind than you think. Y'all just do not see that. Y'all just twist my words around. <clears throat> I do not wish to see any more hatred or adult mockery. And I want that Encyclopedia Dramatica page taken down forever. It will weigh heavily on your conscience each day that it is still up there. I'll leave you with any other thoughts that you may have. But if you dare twist these words around, that will weigh worse on your conscience. The words that I provide from sound mind and heart, it will weigh heavily on you. It will weigh heavily on you. Please note that Chris uses the word China as a euphemism for vagina. As documentarian Gino Samuel points out, Chris frequently makes dramatic hand gestures in order to convey emotions or make a point, such as waving his arms around, changing his vocal tone wildly, or removing his glasses in a serious manner. This actually reminds me of someone else we've seen get negative attention on the internet recently, but I can't quite put my finger on who that is. Attention all Sonichu fans, not haters. On the 6th of August, Chris uploaded a video asking his fans to rally around him and help him take down the Encyclopedia Dramatica page. He was under the impression that there were people out there who were genuine fans of his work, and not just trolls pretending to like some things he posted. He would call for them to send complaints to Jason Kendrick Howell. Attention! All Sonichu fans on the internet who do not hate me, 
Christian Weston Chandler. For I have an important message for y'all. If y'all would actually like me to bring up new stuff for Sancho and conclude the stories, you could do so by taking by having that encyclopedia dramatic page take it down so that I can feel more comfortable in drawing and coloring the comics that y'all have grown to love. Not counting those who are giving me all the hate. But on that note I have the bigger update. If you want to send all your complaints for me not doing the work that I should be doing, you can send every last complaint to the one called Jason Kendrick Howe. Also known as Howe Games or Liquid Snake. For he is, and I quote in an email he sent me, the creator of the Encyclopedia Dramatica ED page for me. And he states further, My, my, you seem rather angry about it in your last YouTube video. A few months ago, you asked me why I made the page for you. My reason? You are, j you are too damn funny to ignore. Also, the page will not be brought down. Toodles. He is a dork of ages. Y'all should be sending every last complaint and hater towards rain out upon him. Send him every last email you can. Shower him with as much hate as possible until that Encyclopedia Dramatica page is taken down along with him. And again, the email address. Send all your hatred to him. Every last ounce. Because he is the man to complain to, for he is the one who created that dang page. And that's for you, Jason Kedrick Howe. As sure as I am to get at least one ounce of vagina, I have your number, and you're going down. Kudos to the Encyclopedia Dramatica Destruction. Chris made this video on August 8th, believing that the ED page had been shut down due to his calls for action and the complaints supposedly sent in by fans of his. In reality, the page about him was getting so popular that it was overloading the website and had to be taken down for a short time, though it would be put up again. Still, in the video, Chris would show a preview of his upcoming Sonichu issue as a reward. Ladies and gentlemen on the internet, to all the Sonichu fans, I am pleased to announce that uh, the Encyclopedia Dramatica, not only the webpage, but the whole freaking website's going down. And to make, sure it stay, to make sure it definitely goes down and stays down, do not, and I repeat, do not donate any money to that web page, to that website. Especially if you want to uh, see the more adventures of Sanchu that I am, I am conjuring up in my mind and drawing up. And to give you all a little real reward for uh, your help and effort in the uh, destruction of that heinous slander, I will grant you the uh, Natsess preview to a to a little to a joke I wrote in the upcoming issue, in the upcoming issue, which I have yet to complete. It opens at uh, me thinking, hmm, I feel as silly as the time I temporarily gained weight, became stupid, and went to watch Goat Television at Ghost Command, and Seth MacFarlane, message for you. Creator Family Guy, here's a silly sketch that you may use. You have my full permission to use this sketch. Now as I uh, show you the drawings, note that they are not colored in yet, but I will uh, read the lines as they are said. Okay, so we got everybody sitting at the couch there. DV14, just for the sketch, just like the Family Guy show. The Scalavision says, uh, I got to Use the bathroom, excuse me. Then I'm sitting in the sitting right down saying, uh, I gotta use the can too. Then we see that uh, I found I find the door and it's like uh occupied Look at this. Neutral bathroom for ghosts. And I say, eh, here's a can. Huh, I wonder what these buttons do. Whoop, whoosh! Let's go, Ghostbusters! Let's go, 
Let's go, let's go, let's go, Ghostbusters, let's go, let's go, let's go. Do 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 Let's go, Ghostbusters. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go, Ghostbusters. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Do 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 <laughs> oh, my aching hot sauce! Uh, oh boy, this is not the bathroom. Whoops. No wheels! That's the joke there! Oh, and here's a funnier joke. I'm interrupting my fat guy says, uh, excuse me. Uh, is it possible that I may, uh, keep this, uh, out cool outfit? I need as, uh, uh, this cool outfit. I need as many big outfits as I can get. And I say, sure, no problem. S no problem, Sammy. The fat guy's name, Sammy. See, we coexist. No problem, Sammy. We may need you for uh, another bit in the future anyway. Your medal was not painted with the very special unique symbol and writing on the back so that nobody will mistake it for my original. Ah, yeah, neat. Thanks. Hey, I'll see you later. I gotta go have a brewski. And there you go. Family guy joke I joke before to in the next episode. Which uh, will get on the internet soon enough. But mostly only if that web page goes down. So keep on not donating it and encouraging everybody else to keep the money in their wallets as well. You can save that money for the PBS stations. Keep the British comedy going. Alright, y'all take care. Peace out. Robert Simmons V. Robert Simmons V is a fake name and personality created by a guy whose real name is unknown. This man uploaded videos to YouTube where he pretended to be a person very similar to Chris, addressing like him, speaking like him, and making art like him. He also pretended to be a genuine fan of Sonichu, and exchanged several emails with Chris, causing the two to become friends. Because of this, Robert would make it onto the list of males that Chris did not hate. At the time, this list consisted of Chris's father, God, Jesus, and Santa Claus. An official Sonichu update. On the 15th of August, Chris uploads another video in which he admits that the Encyclopedia Dramatica page managed to go back online. However, he changes his tune about creating more Sonichu comics and decides that the best way to stick it to the trolls is to continue making them. He also talks about trolls hatching a plan to steal his Sonichu medallion, but assures everyone that it'll never happen because he's taking quote unquote security measures. To protect it. He also asks people to contact Nintendo regarding the creation of official Sonichu merchandise. This is an official update to all the loyal Sonichu fans on the internet and everywhere else. Well, first off, the, while the Encyclopedia Dramatica page and the whole website, they uh, did manage to get their ill-gotten money, but I say, screw them. In the air! So anyway, uh, aside from that note, let's get down to more serious measures. While there are, well, I have been hearing the rumor of the medallion stealing, as you can see, it's still on me, man. Ain't nobody gonna get off me, cause more security measures have been taken. This one might be the real one, this one might be the false one. How are you to know? Hmm, that's to your own understanding. But aside from that, I wish to uh, let you all know about how you can actually officially have your own officially approved by myself and distribute, have your own officially approved and well distributed similar medals. Okay, well first off, about uh, 2005 I sent a letter to Nintendo of America 
time know about before I know about my idea and let me make it uh, perfectly clear perfectly clear parodies are legal to copyright they as long as they do not claim to be the original or never intend to be they are spoofs parodies and they are a foremost legal so anyway I sent the letter to Nintendo of America in April of 2005 and they sent me back a reply in the big envelope which I will now read to you a few quotes from as to like uh, how they felt about the idea so in the first so let's just give you a few quotes here so like they say uh, we appreciate you taking the time to share your great science you game with idea with us and uh, yeah it says here that, uh, yeah, they, it goes on to say that Nintendo of America is some of the most devoted, enthusiastic fans of any game developer. Each week they receive uh, hundreds of thousands of suggestions about their games and systems. While they would love to uh, use ideas from, from fans to develop actual products to do the volume of the uh, requests they receive and the resources it would take to process them, they do not accept unsolicited game or product ideas. But they are committed to being the leading age of game and hardware development, though. And they can be sure that they are constantly at work developing new and exciting products and game ideas. Now, uh, here's the interesting part where they quote about how I could actually go further about ch about them changing their minds and actually accepting the idea and helping me uh, making, it, making it totally real. With the video games and the TV animations and the action figures and officially released... They personally approved medals instead of some crappy sugar cookie imitations that, like, you have seen in that picture. Hey, they gave me a free sample of that at the grocery store. It was delicious. That sugar cookie. And this is not a sugar cookie. This, hard plastic. Hard plastic. I tell you what. But anyway... Getting back to the letter, they say that uh, the best way to let other fans know about my idea or to generate hype about the future game I'd like to see is to post the ideas to the forums on their sites. Or like I say, y'all, like I've done I've done a lot. We're better than that. Hey, the website, the MySpace page, the uh, group on the MySpace.com. And so many other things. Some, a few videos on YouTube about myself. And you know what? Hey, think about this. You help me. You uh, listen. You take part of this, and you might be able to actually see official releases of the DVD I put together at about when I turned 25. Hooray! All right. So anyway, get back to that. What you can do to see all this in fruition and officially approved distribution. You go to Nintendo.com. If you have an account, or if you don't have an account, you uh, get yourself signed up for free. Talk about Sanchu. Build up more hype in their forums everywhere. Send them emails requesting that they bring them to fruition. They talk to me personally about about bringing them to bringing all that to fruition. Send them the emails, handwritten letters to their official building in Seattle, Washington. You get the address off of the back of any Nintendo of America distributed game software. Also, you can send uh, such uh, letters and emails and possible form suggestions towards Sega of America. Do one or the other, or I would recommend doing both. Sending the cop, sending one to the other, and a copy to the, to the one copy to one, and the copy to the other. You do that, and I will guarantee the more likely success of distribution. Of the official video games I've been dreaming of in my head. You'll definitely see more comic books. You'll definitely see animations and distributions of official action figures and approved medals. So there, that's all you gotta do. Let Nintendo and Sega know about the hype. Send them your personal requests and everywhere. Tell them to talk to me. They both, Nintendo of America and Sega of America, 
they know my address and my phone number. They have it in their systems. So talk to them. Have them talk to me. Bring the science show idea to fruition. And there's the update for now. Thank you for listening. JK Productions. This is the name of a fake company thought up by an early troll who has no documented name. This JK Productions would get into contact with Chris and play on his desire to have Sonichu turned into a legitimate, profitable property. He would start a blog in which he detailed the supposed development of a real video game that revolved around Chris's OC and post semi-frequent updates for viewers to enjoy. This included concept art, development stills, and more. Though outside viewers remained skeptical of this blog's legitimacy, Chris fully believed that this person was working on creating a Sonichu game. This would go on until September 5th, 2008, when JK Productions revealed themselves as a troll. They claimed that Nintendo had sent them a cease and desist letter due to their game infringing on their copyright, and they were forced to change many things about the Sonichu game. This included turning Sonichu into a character called Reginald the Anteal, and making Rose Chu a male Anteal with gay overtones. Despite this, Chris still supported the blog until it stopped posting for good. JK, of course, is common shorthand for the phrase, just kidding, which went right over Chris's head. Bob's second letter to Chris. Like the letter he wrote back in 1987, Bob decided to pen another piece of advice for his now 26-year-old son. This letter was much shorter than the first one, and sees him trying to give Chris some advice on what he might do with the rest of his life. August 18th, 2008. Dear Christian, at this time in life, you and Sonichu need a quest and purpose in life. Let Sonichu become a champion for autistic persons everywhere, and continually defeat the perils of autism. Sonichu could become the spokesperson for autistic persons, with an ongoing fight for them in chapter after chapter, or good deeds on the internet. He could become the spokesperson from now on. You and Sonichu could become famous worldwide. Blanca Weiss this is a fictional woman created by three trolls made specifically to interact with Chris and trick him into thinking that they were in a relationship. While Lori Lopez, created by Joshua Martinez, was the first fake woman to hit on Chris, this was the real start to this trend. Blanca would not be the last troll-created woman to be in a relationship with Chris, but her introduction is a landmark moment in Christery. As you might notice, both her first and last names mean white, in the languages Spanish and German, respectively. This is to poke fun at the fact that one of Chris's main requirements for his girlfriend was that she had to be white. This is something that the trolls at the time really latched onto because, let's be honest, it is kind of funny. Jigliami. In order to make Blanca more relatable to Chris, the trolls operating under her name told him that she was working on a comic book of her own and had created an original character to go along with it. This character was Jigliami, an anthropomorphized version of the Pokemon Jigglypuff, who is stylized to look like a Sonic character. She supposedly has a career as a pop singer. Axe Body Spray In an email to Blanca discussing Robert Simmons V, Chris mentions that he told him to stand out in an open area and try using Axe Body Spray on himself in order to attract a woman. As we will continue to see, Chris has some sort of fixation on Axe, and seems to believe that, as shown in older advertisements for the brand, women are uncontrollably attracted to men who use it and will flock to them. Sonichu Issue 7 Published on August 20th, 2008, this issue of Sonichu sees the main cast attempting to locate the Sonichu Balls, now renamed Sonichu Crystals, since the trolls made comments about Sonichu Balls being a gay reference. In the beginning, Megan makes a small appearance as she sets up Bionic the Hedgehog and Magaji the Skunk for a date. Chris, Magichan Sonichu, and Sonichu travel back in time to find one of the crystals, which took the form of a basketball that hit Chris in the head during high school when he was coming up with the idea for Bionic, 
They retrieve the crystal, but Chris gets lost in time as they return to present day, rendering him as missing for the time being. There is also a segment in the middle of the issue that transitions into a Family Guy style skit featuring a Chris who is drawn to look like Peter Griffin. This was the skit he previewed in the Kudos to the Encyclopedia Dramatica Destruction video. The reason Chris removed himself from the main plot was because people complained that the comics were focused too much on him and not enough on Sonichu. At the end of the issue, Chris includes an upskirt shot of Rose Chu as Sonichu comforts her after Chris's disappearance in order to once again prove to everyone that he likes women, not men. There is also a cutaway segment to this Quickville radio station, KCWC, where a character named DJ Jamsta Sonichu and Lolisa Rose Chu interview Jigliami and her manager, Blanca Weiss, as well as Robert Simmons V. Simon Chu and Simone LaRose Chu. Simon Chu is a spoof character created by Evan Christopher George, aka the guy who first emailed Chris the fan art from 4chan, that he sent to Chris in the hopes of getting him featured in the Sonic Chu comic. He is depicted as a Pikachu who was raised by a Beedrill Pokemon, which caused him to evolve with drill powers in a similar manner to how the chaotic combo were created. Chris, however, didn't like this character. He apparently liked the idea, though, since he morphed Evan's creation into a character called Simone La Rose Chew, a female Rose Chew with orange fur, drills on her hands and tail, infrared eyes, and a shell covering her back. Sonichu Game Talks 1 and 2 These are two videos uploaded by Chris to YouTube on August 28, 2008. In it, he talks about the video game supposedly being developed by JK Productions and his role in its creation. It seems he was prompted to make this video by JK Productions as he says at the start that this was, quote, suggested by my, uh, associates who are in... on the Sonichu game, end quote. He talks about ideas he had for its story and gameplay, and that he was hoping to work with Nintendo of America and Sega of America so that this could be an official project as well as releasing merchandise. He also mentions future comic storylines, specifically regarding his own fate. He states that Chris will return to the comic at some point, and then retire as mayor so that the story could focus on Sonichu himself. He states that he's renaming Black Sonichu to Blake, and hypes up the next issue of his comic book, which he refers to as the Spring Break issue. He also mentions his relationship with Blanca, who is not his girlfriend yet, but a nice friend he meant over the internet. An update to my loyal fans on the internet through the YouTube. You know who I am by now, the big CWC, the original creator of Sonichu and Rose Chu, my electric hedgehog Pokemon. All right, well, first off, I am going to uh, give y'all some talk as, uh, as uh, suggested by my uh, associates who are in on the Sonichu game. That's, uh, that's uh, in development. I'm uh, still thinking about the uh, story very much. It's in my, it's oh, I got a big chunk of the stories in my head. It's going to be like multiple stories. Like, you know, we'll go through multiple characters, uh, all the original Science Gym Rose Two Hedgehogs. That's uh, one idea. Yeah. So, uh... Yeah, well, anyway, I'm just going anyway, to mention a few uh, random uh, things that I'm thinking about between the comic and the game and whatever else that may come out of it. Mm. As for uh, plans, as for future plans of the game, once it uh, gets, uh, once it gets fully developed and released onto the uh, systems, excluding the uh, head spots. Yeah. Anyway, um, once we get this, uh, once we get the uh, game game project off the ground, hopefully with the assistance of Nintendo of America and Sega of America, we will def we, there will definitely be the uh, release of the official Science Shoe merchandise, including officially released and distributed manufactured medallions for uh, one thing, copies of my. Uh, C my CWC on TV DVD that you've seen only a few bits of on the uh, YouTube. 
and such, and uh, the as well as uh, possible as possible Sancho action figures. Mm, let me point out one thing, just so we're clear. The name of the comic is Sancho. Sancho. It's about. It should be mostly about the electric hedgehog Pokemon. Not me. I'm just the intrusive director, and I picked up that plot line from the anime series itself saga, with Shinichi Watanabe doing pretty much the same thing that I did. But, you know, I'll give you all a sneak peek. At the end of the uh, season, I will be coming out of the uh, time void, but also I will be uh, relinquish I will be relinquishing my uh, role as mayor, but I will still be the main founder of Quickville. I'll be given the keys of... Uh, in a, Story-wise, I'll be giving the keys to the city and, and the whole mayorship to my, in my to my twin sister. But do note that I will still definitely be the original creator of Sancho, no matter what. Even though I'm just even though I'm basically taking out myself out of the story because I felt like I've been hogging the spotlight for too long. So at the end of the season, I will humbly withdraw myself. But I will still be making like you know cameo appearances now and then as I see fit in the comic. As for the uh, story of the uh, game, I got a few ideas in my mind. Uh, Alright, so here's the idea. Alright, at the end of season, at the end of comics season one, I will reveal that, I will reveal that, uh, I take uh, Marilee Walsh's uh, wand, that's uh, also known as, also, you know, as, has the spirit of the evil Count Graduan. He's going to be the big leading villain in the second season. I'll be tossing the wand, tossing it up to the moon, and you can take a stab at uh, who he will manifest into that has been stranded on the moon since uh, number one. Comic number one. Emphasis on the number. Because you don't want to get messed up with number zero. So that's something for y'all to read the comic and get yourself familiar with. Let's see what else we got here. Um, oh yeah, that's uh, the main point of the uh, villain. Now, uh, as far as some ideas I have upon the uh, multiple stories, uh, I'll give you like uh, beginnings of what I have in mind in a nutshell. First, to be first that you'll be able to unlock by you'll be able to play by default in the video game, the Sancho game, will be Sancho, the original the original Sancho. Basically, with the opening being, being uh, running about like you know, like Sonic the Hedgehog would, and then he finds out that uh, Roshi has been kidnapped. So uh, he so the basically his story will be to uh, go out and rescue her. And then uh, veg, and then the veg, and then as his story progresses, he'll get to meet all the other he all the other hedgehogs as well. But then uh, we move on over to uh, Rose Chew's story, where like you know. First, we uh, see her making her trek down to the uh, shop, down to the shopping mall, and she, and then the, and we, uh, as she go, we follow her as she uh, picks up the uh, multiple number items she uh, wants and needs. Like, uh, oh, look at that ring! That ring's so pretty. Yeah, and then eventually she will get kidnapped, and that will be where it will tie into the beginning of Sancho's story. And then we go into, and then uh, we go into Wild Sancho's story. Uh, not fully developed as to like what his goal is yet, but you know, there will definitely uh, be like you know, he'll be able to find swing through every level. At least uh, he'll be able to find swing as much as reasonably plot possible. And then we go on to bubbles. Everybody love bubbles. Bubbles, he's the bubbly one. Anyway, yeah, some uh, should get more wet. I mean. Uh, all, all the hedgehogs will go through all the same levels, except uh, variation. Bubbles will be mostly being a, will mostly be able to swim. Some so somewhat underwater versions of those levels. And a jack, uh, you know, will she'll, she'll she'll be flying high, casting off wing attacks against her, the enemies in her story. Punchy's uh, he's gonna be punching down the bad guys. But unlike Knuckles, not no no treasure hunting. He's not a treasure hunter. He's uh, basically just the master of the old ninjutsu and something. But he mostly punches, punch, punch, punch. Yeah. 
And then Magic Chan, you know, he'll be it'll, it'll be similar to like what Silver could do since you know he is the psychic one. And yes, Black Science Chu will uh yeah, definitely give him his story and the, his own storyline, like, you know, you know, basically starts off as bad starts off bad like he did, but then they gets betrayed by uh Nate Sirk who turns to the round knock. Yeah. So anyway, uh yeah, they basically leave, so he basically leaves him behind and uh, tries to go about uh, looking up his own uh, meaning of uh, life and whatnot, like uh, similarly how Shadow would. But also reveal definitely Black Side Shoe. Also, you know, for short, for Black Side Shoe was Black Shoe. I'm changing it. For his nickname, as it will be reveal revealed in the upcoming Spring Break issue. Hey man, fun on spring break! He will prefer to be called Blake. Simply Blake. Yeah, so anyway, yeah, Blake's farting around with Bubbles. But Bubbles likes to try to think that she can keep it keep it to herself. Like, you know, she wants to put she wants she has like a, you know, ooh, she turned on by the dark side of the force. And all the nothingness that Black that Blake will want to bring with him, but it's obvious to wrote it's obvious to original Rose Chew. so she tossed a, so she. What's the word I'm looking for? What's the word? You know, uh, oh yeah, she gossips with An she gossips with Angelica about it. But anyway, uh, among all the uh, stories between my electric hedgehogs and uh, myself, I'll be leaving the uh, at the end of the first season. Mm, I have a feeling that, you know, I'll be able to uh, work better once in real life I actually do find my woman to become my sweetheart. But, you know, it's so, it's nice to know that I actually do have a good gal pal that I've made over the internet recently who's uh inspired character. She was inspired by me. Her inspired character I've given my full approval of and introduced in the comic I just uploaded to what is now can also be considered to be Sideshoe.net. Nothing but net. Screw your com. I got the net. Yeah. Her name is, uh, she, her online name is, uh, Kawaii Kitsune. And she is the, and she herself is the original character of the new bubblegum pop star. Jigiyami. Jigiyami. Yeah. So, like, you know, uh, it's possible she may, uh, actually, she and I may actually meet in the future, but, uh, yeah, because, you know, I, reason why I put, I allowed, uh, like, you know, interviews with, uh, Kawaii Kitsune and, uh, Robert Simmons V, because those two, they both, they both each have earned my trust. In their own way, between uh, Robert's YouTube videos and uh, just uh, and then a whole bunch of uh, honest chats between uh, Kawaii. Yeah. So basically, they both burned my trust. So I give them radio interview on the in the comic between Jamsta and Noisa. The Lisa. Yeah. Okay. So uh, anyway, point is. Science you game. I just gave you the uh, details on that. Give you a little sneak peek at the uh, spring break issue and uh, and the season one. But uh, basically, the uh, science you game will definitely have uh, you know stories between science you and Rose Chew and, and the other hedgehogs. They're, they're like a few. They're like uh, they'll start. Started, they'll start off with the stories that originally originated in season one. They'll mostly be uh, the newer stories that'll be revealed in season two. All right. So anyway, that's the uh, update. Be sure you go to uh, sciencegame.blogspot.com to uh, talk to my associates over at JK Productions, or uh, or uh, talk about how you're looking forward to the game. Because, yep, just like sciencegame.net. I'm excited, I'm excited about the game as well.
I don't have any future plans as of this point, but, uh, you know, I think my, I'll feel better with my future set when I have my uh, sweetheart. So, thank you very much, every one of you, for your uh, patronage. And I hope you all have a pleasant day. Chris's email messages to Blanca. Much like with Megan, we actually have access to many of the emails sent between Chris and Blanca. In these chats, we can see that they discuss Sonichu, Jigliami, their relationship, and a variety of other topics. Something of note here is that the trolls behind Blanca sent several photos supposedly of her to Chris. Each photo was of a different woman, and yet Chris never noticed. This is either because he is stupid, a real possibility, too desperate for a girlfriend to entertain the possibility that Blanca was fake, or this was an example of facial blindness. This is a symptom of autism that some people have, though it can't be totally confirmed whether or not Chris has this. Sonichu Episode 17 Chris released this segment of Sonichu Issue 8 early as its own standalone release on September 9, 2008. This is one of the most infamous pieces of Sonichu material out there, and I'll probably have to be real careful with how I phrase things. If you want a quick recap of this episode, check out this video by the channel Ghost Gum if you haven't already. Anyway, this episode is Chris's way of fighting back against the trolls on 4chan and something awful. In this segment, he gives a disclaimer that all his characters are over the age of 18, despite that previously not being the case, before depicting a several page long graphic sex scene between Sonichu and Rose Chu. Once that's over, Rose Chu goes online and sees a website called 4centgarbage.com, which is a combination of 4chan and Encyclopedia Dramatica. Sonichu sees an image of Rose Chu with male genitalia and faints, as he believes it to be a real image. Rose Chu gets angry and decides to fight back by taking lewd images of herself and uploading them. These images are actually ones that Chris uploaded to ED himself a few days earlier. Later, Rose Chu, Sonichu, and Wild Sonichu go to the 4 cent garbage building that's apparently located in Tennessee. While Wild Sonichu searches for a Sonichu crystal, Rose Chu and Sonichu confront the leader of 4 cent garbage, a character called Jason, who is a stand-in for Jason Kendrick Howell. Negotiation is briefly attempted, during which Sonichu gives a page-long monologue about how the ED page is in direct opposition to the American way. This goes nowhere, and so a fight ensues. After Jason throws a pickle at Rose Chu, she gets enraged, tears off her clothes, and transforms into the Incredible Lioness, before attacking Jason and ripping his head open, though she doesn't kill him. Wild Sonichu retrieves the Sonichu crystal and, in an epilogue, all the Rose Chews come together and take lewd photos in order to protest ED and advocate for women's rights. Simone La Rose Chew makes her first appearance and a character called Zappina Rose Chew shows up to try and join the other Rose Chews in their photography. However, she's 14 and can't join because of, and I quote, dumb laws. Fake Blanca a troll known as Lord Silly Nipples began to email Chris pretending to be Blanca, unbeknownst to the three trolls who created the character in the first place. Skipping several steps of social engineering, this troll quickly tempted Chris by playing on his lust. This fake Blanca would ask him to send her nudes, with the promise of her showing her sexy side to him if he did so. Chris quickly gave in to her and took a series of nude photographs of himself and sent them to the fake Blanca. On September 11th, Lord Silly Nipples posted Chris's nudes on ED and changed Blanca's MySpace profile to an image of a cartoon black man in a pickle costume. There's gotta be some joke about this happening on September 11th, but I can't think of one off the top of my head. Chris would post a video lamenting about what had happened, be sad about Blanca turning out to be fake, and would assume ownership of Jigliami and pass her off as his own creation, since Blanca was not a real person. He also briefly mentions an ad for Sonichu that appeared in a magazine and urges people to boycott it, since he did not authorize it. An official update. You know who I am? 
but right now at the moment I'm upset and sad. The featured friend and I have uh, recently given a guest spot in the in the uh, in the uh, comic in the seventh comic book. Turns out that woman was a fake troll. And well, she rather he tricked me into revealing some adult type stuff. I was tricked. I was betrayed. So, co so the one that the, so YouTube member Kawaii Kitsune. The yeah. YouTube people destroy that account because that person does that person does not is not who he claims to be. Uh, sorry, Bob, you you gave me a bad lead, but hey, it's not your fault. Also, on another note, uh, I noticed uh, I have taken the notice of the uh, recent ad. In the, video, in the video game magazine or comic book somewhere, I don't not sure exactly where, about merchandise. I did not, I have not ever, up to this point, authorized any distribution or advertisement of any Sanchi merchandise. So, the ad there, that is a fake. Boycott that at all costs. And for God's sake, Stay away from that Encyclopedia Dramatica page. Unless you've already seen it. Those of you who haven't, stay away from that. Stay away from that website. Good day. Also, at uh, this point, I will uh, claim Jigliami as my own from this point on. And the uh, Blanca character that I associate with her in the drawing, well, She'll be like a character in a city, but she's not going to be an active character. But Jigliami, I'll be claiming her as my own from this point on. Good day. Pastoral Counseling In the wake of the fake Blanca disaster, Chris emailed his pastor about the incident. The pastor would suggest he meet with the church's pastoral counselor, a woman named Rocky Shoemaker, for advice and prayer, which Chris proceeded to do. He would meet with her over the next several years, and would pass this off as seeking professional help, though Rocky was not a licensed therapist. Vivian returns. Vivian G. sent another email to Chris in what appears to be a genuine, if blunt, attempt to help him. She tells him that his nudes getting leaked wasn't a big deal, urges him to get rid of the medallion and interact with more people, specifically women, in the real world, and tries to convince him that Robert Simmons V is a troll. Chris, of course, did not take any of this advice. Christian's Update, September 13th, 2008 The three original trolls behind Blanca started talking with Chris once more and managed to convince him that the Blanca who had gotten his nudes was a fake. This was, in a sense, true, and Chris once again was led to believe that Blanca was a real woman who was interested in him romantically. The deception continued, and they had a Skype call with Chris in which one of the trolls who turned out to be a real girl with the online name Nurse Ikki-chan, chatted with him and convinced him that she was Blanca. He announced his happiness upon finding out that Blanca was real in a video he posted on the 13th of September. He also references images of Sonichu toys apparently originating in Britain. These images are faked by the same person who made the picture of Sonichu in a magazine, a troll going by the name Jimmy Hill. Jimmy Hill is a real-life person who was involved in football in the United Kingdom. He also admits that JK Productions turned out to be fake. September 13th, 2008. Update. You know, I've gotten over the mess. It's all settled now. Blanca's real. I talked to her. Yeah, she called me. So as for the uh, person who, as for the jerk who uh, posed with the... Uh, Kawaii Katsune name. If I knew who you were, I'd give you a kick in the balls. But I can't because I don't know who or where you are. But if everybody knows the whereabouts of the jerk, 
uh, just happen to be nearby or within the state, give him a swift kick for me. Anyway, as for anyway, I'm happy now. I'm happy. So uh, thank you all for your emotional support. Those of y'all who send me emails and messages. All right, so on to uh, other pressing issues. Yeah, the first off, the uh, toys in the UK. They're definitely uh, fake. I have never approved any merchandise or distribution of such merchandise yet. So therefore, the advertisements of such uh, Sanchu merchandise in the UK, all fake. Uh, possibly this guy named uh, Jerry Hill, I think his name was. But, I mean, uh, that's uh, from a suggestion from, from a, that's a name I got from uh, one of from uh, one of my from one of my fans. Yeah, so uh, you know his initials are JH. If you, I'm sure y'all have heard about him. Uh, the the uh, the uh, person that told me about uh, this told me about uh, JH also apparently sold fake stuff for Warner Brothers and uh, they sued him and they arrested him. So apparently he could be the one that's uh, trying to make a fast buck off of fake merchandise. All right. So uh, anyway, boycott the, by such by the, by the merchandise from the UK. Buy any merchandise from there. Boycott it. Don't do it. As for the uh, game, uh, as for the uh, video game, yeah, that's uh, tempor that's temporary on pause because apparently JK Productions they were a fake company. As I received an email from the uh, prankster behind that behind that uh, hold the leg him confessing so uh, anyway it's temporary on pause so all my fans talk to, talk to Nintendo talk to Sega tell them to come talk to me I want to get science get the science you game idea up in the air with between Nintendo and Sega so yeah it basically covers the uh, topics of uh, interest for now so uh, you know who I am I'll talk to you I'll uh, give another update when I feel like it Peace out. Sonichu Audiobooks. Vivian G began posting videos of Sonichu issues that had been posted thus far, placing images on the screen and reading out dialogue using a disguised voice. You can find the HD remastered versions of these videos on the channel IRGN Archive on YouTube. Snorlax. Lord Silly Nipples pretended to be Chris's high school friend Tiffany and emailed him asking for a copy of his Yep, I'm on TV DVD. He sent it to her, and it got leaked. This is how we have access to many of Chris's childhood videos and photos. When trolls saw this image of Barb, they decided to give her the unflattering nickname Snorlax due to her fatness and the fact that she was sleeping amongst so much junk in this photo. Sarah Jackson Another troll started masquerading as a girl called Sarah Jackson and interacting with Chris on websites like Facebook. They would begin private messaging, and Chris would quickly fall for her. He let Blanca know about this and gave her Sarah's email. The two trolls began emailing back and forth, each calling the other fake and threatening to tell Chris as much, never once breaking character. It's a pretty funny read, and here are some highlights. I care about Christian a lot, and I would not see him hurt by anyone, especially not someone pretending to be a girl to get their kicks from hurting an innocent man who is autistic. I hope you realize what kind of monster you are. Honestly, what do you have to gain from hurting him? Oh, are you going to get more naked pictures of him? Going to rob him of his dignity? You know what? Go do something more productive, like get a job, read a book, I don't know. Do something. What kind of person purposely tries to ruin the life of an autistic? It's beyond me. I've heard of you, girly. I could ask you the same thing, considering that your account was already once hacked by one of those people. I personally think that you are one of those ED people yourself, and I just want you to know that if you get in the way between me and my sweet bear, I will claw your eyes from your face. Chris is a sweet and loving man, and he has feelings for me. You obviously blew it with him, or he wouldn't be talking to me in the first place. So you can just go and jump off a cliff, sister. How dare you? You don't know a thing about me. You're just scared and angry because you know that Chris loves me more. Sorry, hun. He just declared his love for me over Skype while we were both on webcam. But that's okay. 
You already have a lot of burden on you, like your sister and your mother. I think you should take care of them. You are a great person to watch over them, you know? This went on for a while, but Chris eventually chose Blanca over Sarah Jackson. Hacked. Trolls guessed Chris's email password and managed to get into his account on September 17th. This is how we have access to his chats with Blanca and Megan, as well as others. Because of this, they also got into his other accounts, like YouTube, MySpace, Facebook, and eBay. They also discovered several compromising photos of Chris that he hadn't sent to anyone yet, so they decided that they were going to be the first to leak him. Strangely enough, one of these photos is Chris standing in his room wearing his mother's underwear. Foreshadowing intensifies. Also of interest is a photo of Chris's dick, which reveals that it is very bent and misshapen. Trolls would also vandalize his YouTube page by changing the background to a repeating image of a pickle. Because of this, Chris would make a new email account and YouTube channel. Panda Halo. Yet another fake persona began to converse with Chris. This was a girl named Sarah Cassandra McKenzie, who supposedly lived in Australia. He became infatuated with her quickly and decided to walk back his promise of a relationship with Blanca on the 23rd of September. He would upload a video called Chris Chan Update September 24th, 2008. He addresses rumors about him possibly killing himself, buries the hatchet with Adam Stackhouse, and announces that he has a new sweetheart who he does not reveal the name of, though we know this to be Panda Halo. He sings a version of Never Gonna Give You Up by Rick Astley in order to show his love for her, but the backing track he uses comes from an episode of Family Guy, with various dialogue from the show intercut with the song, making it even more unlistenable than it already was with Chris singing over it. Captain's Log, star date September 24th. 2008. This is an update for the Science You fan base, fan base. As you can see, I am safe and well. I have no intention of hurting or killing myself. And I am fine and I'm very well and the comics will, will be resumed in the drawing production soon enough. Also, I would like to uh, update by letting y'all know about uh, Adam Stackhouse who was the winner of the uh, play of that Parappa contest. Leave him alone. I hold no grudge against him, so you leave him and his family, including his sister, alone. It's all forgiven. It's all in the past. Done deal. Also, I have a big announcement. I'm taken. I don't want to be her true name. For for my fear of her, for my worry about her safety. But I want to shout out my love to her. This is for you. And also, I want to tell every one of you jerks who have hacked into our conversations and into our account recently, don't you ever do that again, you bastards. And uh, for my uh, for my AOL associate who uh, gave me the uh, who showed me the uh, HTM who showed me the little page of uh, document, that apology was that you're right. An apology. 
was premature. Because she is real. She is real! I love you! Chris sex logs and sex videos. Chris would use the family computer, which was in his house's kitchen of all places, to have Skype calls with Pan the Halo. She never appeared on camera and only talked to Chris, though this was apparently good enough for him. In these calls, their topic of conversation would quickly turn to sex, with Chris going into a gross amount of detail about how much he masturbates. He also talks about the insane amount of porn and hentai he watches, and says that he knows a lot about sex because of that, despite being a virgin. Chris did not learn his lesson from his nudes getting leaked, and did plenty of embarrassing things on camera, such as masturbating, pretending to be an animal, and more. This happened, and I cannot stress this enough, in the kitchen of his house. Random Access Memory This is a quickism that Chris uses to explain why he randomly jumps from topic to topic and says whatever pops into his head. He uses this term in an AOL conversation with Vivian G, during which she tries again to get him to see that all the girls he's interacting with aren't real and that he must get his life together and become a normal, responsible adult. She also tries to get him to understand how dating works in the real world and that he shouldn't expect a dating education class like he wants and that it won't necessarily fix his problems. Once again, this doesn't work. Vivian tries roleplay with Chris, getting him to pretend that they had just met and were having a normal conversation. But, Chris goes on to talk about Sonichu and his pornographic art. Vivian ends the conversation by saying that trying to help Chris was like talking to a brick wall. Back with Blanca. Chris began talking with Blanca again, telling her that he had a dream where he heard the name of his true sweetheart, and it was hers. In order to prove that their relationship was back on track, he offered to send her his Sonichu, Rose Chu, Black Sonichu, and Jigliami medallions, along with a drawing he did of Jigliami. Blanca accepted his offer. We're being watched. This video, also called Chris Chan Aeon Flux 100408, was uploaded by Chris on October 4th, 2008, where he parodies the MTV animated series Aeon Flux. He declares his love for his true sweetheart and warns the trolls to leave him alone. We're being watched. My name is Christian Weston Chandler. I'm here to find happiness with my true sweetheart who I've known for over two months now. So you trolls best leave us alone. Is anybody listening? Do you believe me? Everybody happy now? Jimmy Hill's animated series. More Jimmy Hill related material began to catch Chris's attention including supposed screenshots of a Sonic Chew animated series that was supposedly being produced. This was different than Chris's Sonic Chew, though, as this Sonic Chew was very publicly gay and was in a relationship with Black Sonic Chew, aka Blake. Chris was replaced by Jimmy Hill, who was designed to look like him, and Mary Lee Walsh. Chris still makes an appearance, though, in the form of a giant robot that attacks Sonic Chew and the others. Chris's Letter to Blanca this is a letter that Chris wrote to Blanca that he enclosed with his medallions and drawings for her. At the bottom of the letter, there were a few drawings of Chris dreaming and waiting to meet Blanca, who he thought he would be able to see in person around Halloween. Here is a reading of the letter. September 29, 2008 Dear Blanca, I'm so happy that you were revealed as my true, honest sweetheart-to-be. In the dream I have anxiously awaited for since the dreams of me and my future daughter. When before my heart was lost and confused, now I truly see the path to true, honest love set for me by God and Jesus. I now can truly hardly wait to meet you around Halloween. If you make it beforehand, we can dress up and go to a local Halloween party. I will make a priority to find for us to go to. How fun! My heart is truly set. I will wait for you, my guiding light, Emmy B. Chan. Smiley face and... St oh. Also, to Blanca's grandmother and aunt in Illinois, who will receive this package for her, please make it top priority to have it ready to give to her when she arrives to visit y'all soon. Peace, Christian Weston Chandler. 
Chris Chan update October 9, 2008. Chris uploads a video to state that Blanca had intercepted the package from the hands of trolls and sent his medallions back to him. This was a bold-faced lie, as everyone who was not Chris knew that Blanca was in fact not real. Chris made a new medallion and claimed that he was taking new security measures in order to ensure its safety. He also then claimed that his Amethyst High School class ring was the true source of his powers, possibly in an attempt to dissuade trolls from trying to steal his medallion again. Captain's Log, Stardate, October 9th, 2008. Y'all know who I am, so my message should be clear. I'm here to dispel a couple of rumors that have been flying around. Firstly, my, my Sanchi medal was not stolen. It was entrusted to my sweetheart, Blanca, who lives over in uh, Kentucky. Rest assured, she is not a troll, so nobody say otherwise. I have talked to her on webcam and video and uh, audio and heard her voice over, micro over her microphone to my speakers and headphones. And I also, I've also talked to her brother, and he's a good fella. Anyway, I sent her, anyway, I sent her the medal, and uh, even though uh, some trolls nearby got hold of it temporarily, she managed to get it back and send it back to me, express. So anyway, with that, uh, while the uh, images on the back of the medal were shown, I have decided to uh, paint over those images and uh, fits my metal to be more unique that can definitely be separated from everybody else. These shrinky ding charms, these three charms, cannot be copied. And I'll tell you something else that cannot be copied. I have modified it with a little peg there to hold my high school ring with my amethyst stone on it. My amethyst first stone. Try copy it now. So anyway, anyway, with that, also the uh, DVD, it, that was not stolen either. The uh, man in the pickle soap tricked me once again by pretending to be a trusted gal pal of mine. So it was sent upon request, but thank God I had the foresight to, to not make a copy of my director's cut, which has a lot more footage on it that any distributed copy has. So anyway, uh, with that, if you see any Sanchu items or the CWC DVD on it, do not buy them, because they are pirated and false, not authorized. Do not buy. And that goes for uh, videos, the videos, the footage from the DVD on YouTube, unless you've already seen them, do not watch them or watch them again because it'll weigh heavy on your conscience. Anyway, before I conclude this update video on this October 9th, I wish to uh, also proclaim my love for my sweetheart. I love you, Blanca. I cannot bear to live without you, baby. So please come here as soon as possible so we can be together forever. My eternal love. I love you, Blanca. I always will. Mmm, pay me. It would just pay me if you if you got hurt. So nobody better harm a hair on her, or else you hear from me. And also the uh, also the 18th episode will be finished soon enough. So to my Sanchi fans, to my loyal Sanchi fans, thank you for your support, and have a good day or a good night. Chris Chan update Columbus Day 2008. This video was posted on October 13th, in which Chris talks about a level he made in the newly released game Little Big Planet, and teases releasing it while also bashing the Xbox, which he calls the Hexbox. He also talks again about Jimmy Hill, and complains that he is supposedly releasing material that has blatantly copied his intellectual property, such as his website, and a Jimmy Hill Yep I'm on TV DVD. He also claims that he is now ignoring trolls, so they might as well stop trying to mess with him. Captain's Log, Star Date, Columbus Day, 2008. It is time for another update of importance, or should I say of three importances. 
First off, the uh, little big planet level y'all have heard about. I have I have the beta, I have the beta and I have completed the level in only two nights. And I got published onto the uh, Little Big Planet database on the internet. But unfortunately, I was as I was about to uh, record the video for to a DVDR. Apparently, my beta had expired, which is kind of bad luck. So I guess I'll just have to wait a week before I can introduce the level fully on a bit on, in a video in video form on the YouTube when the in the game when the official game comes out next week. Little Big Planet only on PlayStation Three. Never accept any invitations, even downloadable to a hatspot. Now, the uh, second thing I would like to bring up at this moment... Master Jimmy Hill! Master Jimmy Hill, as you all may know about him, he has perpetrated, uh, my, or he has perpetrated the uh, rights, of, rights of science here for myself, as you all well know, for the longest time now, that I am the original owner and creator of science ship and roast ship. Uh, this, uh, this imposter is blatantly copying everything note for note for note from me, and it all started from my point of view. Upon my knowledge, the magazine advert for his so-called action figure. I mean, you take a take a good look at that. Take a look at that, because all that is is this this side the hedgehog action figure custom painted. I can easily custom paint this to look like that. With acrylic paint, even. So simple. And so crappy, too. The uh, next thing I should uh, talk about, I mean... Alright. His website. Y'all know my... Y'all know the official and original Sanchi Side logo I've had on there for the longest time. But then, you compare that to his mockery. Can you believe that? It's so crappy. It's so stupid. And then look at the original comic cover for my first comic book. Then look at his mockery. So similar. This guy can't even be original, and yet he parodied himself on Monty Python's Flying Circus. And now for something completely different. The DVD. You all see. I told you all about. I told you all about the footage that, could, that was probably up on YouTube between the various things. But this guy, he blatantly copied that as well. And all he did was take every footage that was all, that was original originated from that from this DVD, and uh, dubbed his voice just to just over my name. So instead of me saying Christian Weston Chandler, he just, he just dubbed his over each side by saying Jimmy Hill. And even more, something completely different. It even says on the bottom here, the part of Jimmy Hill is played by an actor. An actor. And look at that freaking cover. It's more based on the co it's more based on my original comic cover than the original DVD. Anyway, do not buy from Jimmy Hill. He's a fraud, a phony. Is there anything else I want to talk about him? Oh yeah, and if you and if you all will may well be aware may well be aware of. These were the first two Sanchu site logos that were originally up there throughout the evolution of the Sanchu site. The original two images. All right, and now the third and final issue: the uh, internet bullies. You bullies, I know y'all are afraid of me, because y'all, because without me, y'all would have nobody to pick on at this point. But you know what? There are so many famous movie stars, so many famous icons that y'all could just pick on easy enough. But you know what? No matter how many times you direct your influences towards me, I'm just ignoring you. Because basically all you're doing is basically being unheard of. You're basically talking to a brick wall. And I am just blatantly ignoring you hands down. So you may as well just give up. Your, vo your, vo your opinions and voices are not being heard. Y'all are not scaring me. You're not scaring... Y'all are not scaring Blanca. You're, no, you're scaring nobody, misters. It's time to face facts, misters and misses. So with that, I'll leave y'all with the uh, completion of this update. So, good reason to get a PlayStation 3 system of at least 60 gigabytes or higher. Because, uh, you know, they have four USB ports, the memory card slots, and able to 
access the internet wirelessly while 40 gigabyte lower, two USB ports, no memory card slots, and requires an ethernet cable to connect to the internet. And Little Big Planet. And as y'all know from my sponsorship video, most of the videos I put up on YouTube were, spo were sponsored by Sony and their PlayStation I and their PlayStation 3. And also the slideshow that was on the DVD that y'all may have watched on the uh, YouTube as well. Those were done for my PSP and projected with a PSP projector that was only compared with a PSP 1000 series, the thicker one. Versus, uh, like, you know, I could have done it better if I waited for the 2000 series. Where I had the, uh, where I could have plugged in the composite cable and had the thing full screen. But I did not. Because I didn't think of it about them. Alright, so I leave y'all with, the, with those new words. And just a reminder, and y'all will be very well, and y'all won't have to worry. I am safe. I am well. And I'll be staying that way. And I shall keep watch for any bullies. And I will take all necessary steps in due time as I cross those bridges. Be they sound or broken. Thank you very much, and have a good day or evening. Death of Sarah Jackson Because Chris was no longer interested in Sarah Jackson, the troll behind this persona decided to give up and kill her off. Death is a common trope with fake personalities that people use to mess with Chris, but this was the first time such a tactic was used to play on his emotions. Supposedly, Sarah was killed in a car crash on October 13th, the same day Chris uploaded his latest video. The troll pretended to be Sarah's sister and told him what had happened. Sonichu Fans This is a subsite of Chris's Sonichu official website that was created by Panda Halo as a place for fans of Sonichu to congregate. As part of its design, it had an internal relay chat, or IRC, so people could message directly with each other in real time. Chris himself would often join the chat room to discuss Sonichu or talk about himself. Sonichu Issue 10 Preview Chris uploaded a preview of Sonichu Issue 10 on October 15th, showcasing a segment of the comic where Chris Chan Sonichu infiltrates the 4 cent garbage building and gets captured by a tractor beam. His medallion is taken from him, but it is revealed that his amethyst ring is the true source of his powers allowing Chris to turn back into his Sonichu form and save the day. This turn in the plot was undoubtedly influenced by trolls attempting, and succeeding, to steal his medallion, so he wanted to de-emphasize its supposed importance in order to keep it safe. Blanca destroying the medallion. A video was uploaded to YouTube on October 20th by the channel Icarus69. He had previously posted a video showcasing the medallions that had been sent by Chris that he and the other Blanca trolls had received. This time, he destroyed the Sonichu medallion on camera. It was cut up, stabbed, put into a pickle jar, crushed, set on fire, and finally urinated on. Blanca would break up with Chris the next day, ending the Blanca saga. <laughs>
singing in the rain Just singing in the rain What a glorious feel And I'm happy again I'm laughing at clouds So dark up above And the sun's in my heart And I'm ready for love let the stormy clouds chase everyone from the place. Come on with the rain, I've a smile on my face. I'll walk down the lane with a happy refrain, just singing. My singing wooden bed is delicious. Chris would upload the video, Chris Chan Update, October 21, 2008, in response. Captain's Log, star date, October 21st, 2008. Well, it's done. Mm. Blanca and I, well, she broke up with me. Cause the pickle man tricked me again. A few more stupid photos. Anyway, she saw them. She got angry. She broke up with me. So, I'm sad. And the void in my heart that requires a sweetheart is open again, and it hurts. I hope you jerks and trolls who want to break us up are happy. Because all you do is make me feel sad, depressed. And you made me crash into slumber a couple of times. And you know, it takes a lot of stress and exhaust and such to make a person feel like they're going to crash and burn into a whole bunch of into a long slumber that just basically sleeps off, that just basically sleeps off the, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I had it. Uh, Anyway, we're broken up. You jer hope your jerks are happy. So anyway, I'm sad, and Blanca is sad too, and even more sad because her grandma died. <coughs> and uh, as and I know the name of the uh, guy who uh, did that to the medal in that video. His screen name is Ricky Ricardo One Two Three, but real life his name is Ricky. So, anyway, he's either somewhere in Kentucky or somewhere in Illinois, more likely Kentucky. So, if anybody knows him, bring him into justice. Turn him into the police department. I want him to get a sample out of that bastard. <sighs> anyway, other updates. Uh, don't really have too many other updates at the moment. So, uh... You know, Panda Halo is the moderator for the fan site on uh, Dial Officially Approved. So, she's also helped me against uh, the imposter Jimmy Hill. Again, do not buy anything from that bastard imposter. Because y'all know he did the same thing to Warner Bros. years ago. And he was put to jail for it. So he deserves to be put in jail again. Or otherwise, uh, somebody who's posing as Jimmy Hill. And in this case, this guy still needs to be put in jail. So, yeah. They imprisoned the uh, Ricky and the Jimmy, or the imposter known as Jimmy Hill. That's it for now. I'm going to sulk some more and maybe I'll upload this video. I don't know. Y'all yeah, take care, be safe. And that does it for part four of the chronological Chris Chan iceberg. If you pulled up the original image of the iceberg in order to follow along, I'm sure you'll see that I actually added several points of interest myself. This is because I found the original to be a bit lacking in some areas, so I took it upon myself to do a little extra research in order to bring you a more complete picture of this time in Chris's life. The main sources of information I used were the Quickie and Gino Samuels documentary, 
both of which you can find in the description if you want to do some of your own research on Chris. I'll get working on part 5 of this series as soon as I can, in which we'll be going over the next stage of the golden age of Chris Chan trolling, during which characters such as Clyde Cash and Shigeru Miyamoto emerge to mess with him. If you want to know when that comes out, feel free to subscribe to the channel. As always, comment if you have something to say, and like the video if you liked it. I hope to see you back here soon. Bye for now.